Hey guys, it's MJ, the Students Act Tree, and this is going to be another audio lecture on business objectives, which is subject CT2, and this is still chapter one, part two. Um, so like I said, it's business objectives, we're just going to jump straight into the material. And the first thing I want you guys to consider is, what is the objective of a business? And this is quite a, it's quite a fun question to just think about, um, you know, go through all the various things, you know, what, why do we form a business? What is its purpose? And we could come to the answer that the objective of a business is to increase the value of the shares. So a business's goal is to become worth more. And the next question that follows up from that is, how can this be achieved? Now, in the short term, this can be achieved by making more money. So the more money business is making, um, you know, its value will go up. Uh, shareholders uh, would like to see that, you know, more money being made. But in the long term, um, the value of a company goes up when it starts contributing more to society, it starts making, making better products, it starts becoming more, you know, just better for, for the whole economic environment. And this now leads us to, to what are businesses. And we spoke about what businesses are um, in the previous lecture. But another way to think of businesses is that they are a collection of economic projects. And they all have, um, they all have the following components. They have the inputs, um, the inputs being capital and effort. Um, so remember in, in last uh, lecture we spoke about the shoe factory, so the capital would be buying the shoe factory, the effort would be running the factory and actually making the shoes. Um, then there is the time, the time process. Um, you know, you don't just buy a factory and then suddenly you've got shoes. It takes a process and this can take a few days, a couple of weeks um, before the shoe is completed and then you can sell the shoe and this is where we talk about the outputs, you get money and you get value. So with a shoe, you can sell the shoe, you get money um, for what people paid for it, but there's also the value, and this is a more wishy-washy uh, thing in the sense that you can't really quantify it, um, it's not very scientific, but there's a value had in somebody having shoes, you know, protects their feet. But it's very difficult to put... Um, a number on that value and this is unfortunate because it means a lot of the time people when people come to business they now focus on capital as the input and output as the money and they don't tend to think of the effort or the value just because those things are hard to to measure up now where actuaries come in or where actuaries can help a lot in businesses and day-to-day is that these things, capital, effort, time, money, and value, they're all uncertain, they're all random variables. And yes, in the beginning, they have an expected value, and you know this expected value that the, share, the shares are priced. Um, but as time progresses, you know, these expected values can change. Certain events can happen, or um, uncertainty can decrease as you get closer to the end goal. And thus, we can see that the value of the share can change. And now what happens in a business is that um, some shareholders might choose to sell out um, at this time and you know, get a little bit of profit or, or you know, use their money elsewhere. And the great part of the business is that when shareholders buy and sell their shares, they shouldn't have an impact on the business. So it shouldn't disrupt the business. Because... Some of the time, or with some of our really big, large corporates, you have these really wealthy individuals or these wealthy consortiums, and they're investing. And they don't have the time to you know, actually do the actual business or do the effort. So they hire professional managers. So what we're doing is we're splitting the input. Shareholders provide the capital. They then hire professional managers who you know, contribute the effort. And then um, what happens is the money and the value will then get distributed between them. So with some of your bigger businesses, what you have is you have your shareholders 
and they appoint um, board of directors. And your board of directors will then um, choose a whole bunch of general managers and your general managers will hire a bunch of employees. This is a general uh, corporate governance that a lot of firms um, adopt. And like I said, there's the pros. You're getting guys who are good at managing to manage and you're getting guys who have the cash to invest to invest. Okay, But now sometimes or most of the times there are some cons to this separation of duties. And that happens because there are conflicting objectives. I mean, you look at our shareholders, they want a high return. You know, they're there to, to chase the profit. So they want to maximize um, the capital to money ratio. They want to put in as little capital as possible and get as much money back. You know, that, that is the perfect situation for the shareholder. Whereas if you look at the manager, I mean, he's putting in the effort side. So if he's going to be putting in effort, he wants to make or choose the projects that maybe are a little bit more interesting, a little bit more fun to do, and maybe require a little bit less effort. Because the ratio they're looking at is the effort to value created. Because at the end of the day, they want to f uh, feel you know, fulfilled that they've done a meaningful job and that you know, there's, a, there's purpose in their work. So they're going to be looking at the value created. They're also concerned about the money, but they're also concerned about the value. Um, and that, I guess that's what it is. The shareholder, you know, he wants to maximize returns or build an empire. It's all about the money and, and all that returns. Whereas the manager might want more of a luxurious working lifestyle and just he'd be uh, happy with stable returns. And this is where we're coming into this whole agency theory and information asymmetries. I mean, and you get it also with other parties. So with lenders, people who lend money to the company, they're more focused on short-term goals, on you know the security of the company because they want to get their money back. Um, also with say employees, they employees are, are an interesting one. I mean, let me let me give you guys a quick little example. Um, so like say today, I went to I went to the gym and I bought a smoothie. Um, from the the smoothie bar. Now, the person selling the smoothie is receiving a fixed salary in, in most of the cases, which means if they sell one smoothie or they sell a hundred smoothies, they're going to get paid the same. So if they do a really good job and they make a perfect smoothie and they're really nice to the employee, uh, to the customers and they really create like a real nice vibe going, what's happening to them? They're creating more work for themselves because more people are going to come buy smoothies and they're going to have to do more work, more effort. So what I've normally found with the smoothie people is they're not the friendliest. They take a long time when they make the smoothies. And I actually once even got a smoothie that had you know shredded plastic in it. Um, but that was a, a once-off <laughs> once occasion. But the, the whole idea is that they're more interested in they're getting their fixed salary they have to, look, they don't want to work terribly because then, you know, they could always get fired. But I mean, especially in South Africa, we've got such strict labor laws that it is quite difficult to get fired. So once you get a job, you're actually quite comfortable and you can slack off like that because the law is in your favor. And because you're getting paid a fixed salary, if you sell one smoothie or a hundred, you'd rather sell the one smoothie. And this is where the subject tries to, to look at this problem and say, well, how can we fix it? You know, this, this actuarial topic is, how do we avoid um, this conflict of interest and how do we motivate? And I mean, the one, one case which um, a lot of smoothie places do is they might have a manager. So a manager's there, he's monitoring them, making sure everybody's working, making sure everybody's being nice to the customers. But this introduces another cost, you know, the whole agency cost, because you know you have to pay that manager, and he also might have conflicts of interest and stuff like that. It would be much simpler to just align the incentives, you know, tell the tell the smoothie guys, say for every smoothie you sell, you get um, a piece of that price. So if you're selling it for say ten dollars, well, sorry, that's a very expensive smoothie, but if you're selling something for ten dollars 
you get to take two dollars and this would incentivize the smoothie maker with the shareholders to maximize the amount of smoothies sold so that they get a higher salary and the shareholders get a higher salary so this this is this whole um, you know when incentives are not aligned and this is also one of the reasons why I don't like investing with asset managers so you know there's these big financial companies they're like invest your money with us or give your money to us we'll invest it um, and we'll pay you a return and what they say is we've aligned the incentives by if we get over a certain uh, like if we get 20 percent or more then our fees increase and you know when you first think of that you're like okay well that's great our incentives are aligned the more money they uh, make or the more money they make for me the more money they receive Therefore, let me give my money to them because they're going to chase the highest returns. But there's a big problem with that uh, thinking because when it comes to investing and business and all that type of stuff, there is the risk dimension. And there's kind of that you know basic rule that the more risk you take, the higher the potential reward. Now, if I go with my money and I give it to one of these asset managers, they are incentivized to take higher risks. Because if, let's say, they risk in this really risky business and it succeeds, well, I'm happy I get lots of money, they're happy because their fee increased. But I'm more well off than them because I got a lot more. Um, but what happens if they invest that all my money in this really risky business and that business tanks? Well, then, you know, well, the business fails. What they lose is they just miss out on their fees, which is a very small amount compared to all my capital that I've invested that has diminished. So what we see is these, this agency theory problem exists in quite a lot of economic activity, whether it's regards to risk or with regards to you know, selling and effort and all of this type of stuff. And so I guess to just land this whole uh, lecture on business objectives, we should maybe redefine the business objective as maximizing shareholders' wealth, but within external constraints. And what exactly those constraints are, well, that's what the rest of the subject is going to be exploring. So this is just very much of an introduction um, to all the corporate governments, agency theory, and all the weird and wonderful things that can go wrong um, in the mechanics of the business. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, click like, ask questions in the comment section, share with your friends, and subscribe. I will be making more videos like this. Thanks guys, and yeah, as always, study hard. Cheers.